Baruchem Aboyim, thank you very much for coming. Tonight's uh, topic will be on grandparents, and I hope everybody has them. Um, in the prophecies that we have received about the coming of the Messiah, Mashiach, it states that in the time before the coming of the Messiah, it will be the children, the children who will bring their parents back to the service of God and religion. Uh, this prophecy is very unusual. After all, we are a people who revere our elders, and we look to them for guidance and for assistance. Our whole existence as Jews can be traced back to our forefathers, our grandparents. It is only because of them that we have been chosen to be God's holy nation. As it states in the book of Bereshit, in the portion of Vayera, chapter 18, verse 19, where God says to Abraham, Abraham, our grandfather, God says, for I know that he will command his children and his household after him, and they will keep God's way, doing charity and justice. So this reverence for our elders is a trait that has been passed down from generation to generation. Now, based on this fact, how is it possible that before the coming of the Messiah, it will be the children who will bring their parents back to Judaism, to Yiddishkeit? Traditionally, it has been our parents and our grandparents who have been our teachers, our mentors, our guides, in forming our relationship with our Father in Heaven. They have been the conduit through which we have been able to survive the long exile that we have been forced to endure. The Talmud tells us that the Torah was given on Har Sinai, a Mount Sinai. Another name for the mountain is Chorev. Now the word Cherev, which is the same letters as the word Chorev, means sword in Hebrew. There's a medrash that states that the sword and the book came down to this earth at the same time. If we don't keep one, then we'll have to deal with the other. Now the word Chorev, Ches Reish Beis, is an acronym for the words Chesed, Rachamim, and Busha, which translate to mean kindness, mercy, and modesty. The Talmud states that if a Jew does not possess these three traits, then he is descendant of the Erev Rav, the mixed multitude that came out of Egypt with the Jewish nation when they were redeemed from slavery. Now, it's not an accident that we as Jews, whether we are religious or not, possess these traits. We have been bred to be God's chosen nation by virtue of our connection to our grandparents. Without that connection, we, we, we become like any other nation, not special at all. In the book of Devarim, in the portion of Kiseitse, chapter 21, verses 18 through 21, we find the law concerning what we call the Ben Sora Morer, the rebellious son. Without going into all the details, the Torah is telling us about a 13-year-old boy who has rebelled against his parents, and they bring him to the Jewish court, and they tell the court that our son is a wayward, is wayward and rebellious. He does not listen to us and is gluttonous and a drunkard. The law states all the men of the city should pelt him to, uh, to death with stones so that you will rid yourself of the evil in your midst. But the obvious question is, why do we kill him? After all, he's only 13 years old. Our whole religion is based upon the concept of tshuva, repentance. Why kill him? He may change his ways. He may well repent. After all, he's only a kid. At least give him a chance. So the answer seems to be that he can only be designated as a Ben Sora Mora, a rebellious son, if both his parents, his mother and father, bring him to the Jewish court. His parents are his connection to the Avos, our grandfathers. True tshuva, true repentance is a gift from God. It was first given to the Avos, and our parents are the conduit through which that blessing flows. When both parents accuse their young son before the court, then his connection to the forefathers is severed, and true tshuva is not possible. He may repent, but it won't last. So we execute him before his sins become more and more grievous. Again, we see the importance of grandparents. 
In the Passover Haggadah, we read about four sons. There are those who say that these four sons represent four different generations. So when the simple son, the Tom, asks his father, the evil son, the Russia, a question about life and religion, his father tells him, go ask your grandfather, the Chacham, the wise son. His grandfather then answers the simple son's questions and guides him in the proper path of goodness and godliness. However, when the wise son, the Chacham, the grandfather dies, then the fourth son, who is the Enishadei Elishal, the one who doesn't know how to ask, goes to his father, now who is the Tom, the simple son, with his questions. But he doesn't have any answers, and neither does his grandfather, the evil son. The young man is lost. The word Hasaba, in Hebrew meaning the grandfather, the gematria of the word Hasaba is 67. This gematria of 67 connects to the first of the 13 blessings of the request that we say three times every day in the standing prayer called the Amida. In the blessing of Atta Chonein the Adam Das, you graciously bestow upon man knowledge. The blessing contains 67 letters. As I previously mentioned, we connect the wise son, the Chacham, the Haggadah, to a grandfather. The word Chacham has a numerical value of 68, the same as the Hebrew word Chaim, which is life. So, connecting ourselves to a wise grandfather can help us to live a long life based on wisdom and that we glean from our grandparents. If not for the influence of a grandfather, the whole Jewish nation could have been lost. We know that after Yaakov took the blessings from Esau, his brother, that Esau wanted to kill him. However, because of Esau's great love and fear of his father Yitzchak, he decided to wait to get his revenge until after his father's death. Now Rashi in the book of Bereshit in the portion of Ayetze 2911 states that Yaakov was on his way to Lovan's house when he was confronted by Eliphaz, the son of Esav. Esav was sent, pardon me, Eliphaz was sent by his father to kill Yaakov. Rashi there states that Eliphaz did not want to kill Yaakov. He had a certain sense of decency that he had acquired by growing up on the lap of his grandfather Yitzchak. So Yaakov told him Anikames, that a poor man is considered as if he is dead. And with that he convinced Eliphaz to take all of his money and leave him penniless, in a sense, dead. If not for the love and guidance of a grandfather, Eliphaz would have killed Yaakov, and that would have not been only the death of Yaakov, but also of all his descendants, the whole Jewish nation. Another example that we see in the Torah of grandfather's positive influence on his family is connected to the beginning of the slavery of the Jewish nation in Egypt. Paro, the king, called for a national day of patriotism. All the Egyptian citizens were asked to come together and to participate in the construction of defensive cities for the, to defend the nation. And even Paro himself attended. He even wore a gold necklace with a symbolic gold brick hanging, hanging from the chain. The Jews came, in, came out in mass. We are always the most patriotic citizens in the countries that we reside in, much like Germany before World War II or the United States today. All the tribes were in attendance, all except the tribe of Levi. So the question is, why didn't Levi participate? Now, the last of the brothers to die in Egypt was Levi. He was still alive when Paro called for this special day of patriotism. The Levites also were preparing to join their brethren in this celebration. However, Levi, their old grandfather, asked them where they were going. And they told him to join in the day of patriotism. And he said to them, stay home. You have no connection with Egypt or the Egyptians. So they listened and did not participate. That day was the beginning of the slavery of the Jewish nation. 
There were Egyptian overseers present who recorded the number of bricks that each Jew laid that day. And that became the quota that would be expected of them to lay every day thereafter. Now due to the advice of their grandfather, Levi, the Levites became the priests of the Jewish nation and they were not subjugated to the harsh and cruel slavery that their brethren had to endure. Sadly, this has become the story of our journey in the exile. Many Jews were forced to leave their religious communities in Europe because of pogroms, persecution. They came to places like the United States where keeping Shabbat and Kashrut was very difficult, if not impossible. Others left Europe to throw off the yoke of Torah and mitzvot. In many Jewish European communities, the Shtetlach, if you didn't keep Shabbos, and if you didn't follow the laws of the Torah, you couldn't be married, you couldn't be buried. So, once they left their religious surroundings, they abandoned their God and embraced the culture of the Gentiles around them. They still believed in God, but it was not the God that we serve. It was the God that is on a dollar bill, as it says on the back of the United States currency, in God we trust, the religion of the dollar. There was probably no one single event in history that affected the grandfather-grandchild relationship more than the Holocaust. Hitler, Yamach Shemo, may his memory be wiped out, killed out many of our religious grandparents. Many of those who survived were so angry and disillusioned with God and the Jewish religion that they cut themselves and their new families completely off from Judaism. So there was a whole generation of Jewish children who were brought up with little or no connection to God or his Torah. The stage was set for the words of the prophets to ring true. But today, thanks to visionaries like the Lubavitcher Rebbe, may he rest in peace, the words of the prophets have come true. Children are now bringing their parents back to the God of our grandfathers. Now it's almost been 75 years since the Holocaust and now we are the grandfathers. It is our job and responsibility to teach our grandchildren about God and his Torah. And with that, may we help to herald in the coming of Mashiach Sekenu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. Shabbat Shalom.